uh, colleagues, a, a few of us started off this year with a press conference in Skid Row in Los Angeles. And we were supporting President Pro Tem Kevin DeLeon and his immediate press predecessor, uh, Daryl Steinberg. And the topic was Prop 63, that we could use some of Prop 63, the Mental Health Services Act, to uh, provide revenues to pay for housing for the mentally ill homeless. And at that time, I thanked President Pro Tem, Daryl Steinberg, our former President Pro Tem, for one, authoring Prop 63, but, but two, for also authoring Senate Bill 585 uh, in 2013, which now allows Prop 63 money to be used for the implementation of Laura's Law. And <clears throat> I shared my intentions uh, with him at the podium to do something similar this year. And that's what we have before us, colleagues. Uh, so I just want to say at the beginning that contrary to the committee analysis, which concludes that it is unclear if this bill is needed, I, I'm here to tell you that it is definitely needed and it's necessary and critical. <coughs> Excuse me. Proposition 63 and the resulting regulations does not provide a clear understanding on if money can be used for outpatient crisis stabilization services that are designed to work with both voluntary and involuntary patients. Senate Bill 1273 is a simple clarification that the Mental Health Services Act funding can be used for programs that collate voluntary and involuntary services. So I want to thank the committee, the committee chair, and the staff for all of their um, hard work on this bill, and I, I accept the amendments that were agreed to. Uh, as stated in the support letter from the County Behavioral Health Directors Association, CSAC, and the Urban Counties Caucus, this bill would provide counties additional flexibility in the use of the Mental Health Services Act for funds for outpatient crisis stabilization services. Uh, in the County of Orange, with some 3.1 million residents, we have very few uh, rooms to provide for mental health crises. Uh, in Orange County in 2011, we had a tragic homeless person who was schizophrenic. Uh, his name was Kelly Thomas, and he was killed in the city of Fullerton in a tragic incident with the, the Fullerton Police Department. Uh, after that, we had mental health advocates come to the Orange County Board of Supervisors and come to our podium and say, you know, if you would have had Laura's Law in place, maybe Kelly Thomas would be alive today. So we pursued Laura's Law, which was AB 1421 by Helen Thompson from Yolo County, a wonderful lady who based the law on Will Laura Wilcox, who was murdered in Nevada County. Uh, and Nevada County adopted Laura's Law, but no other county did. So we, uh, I, I was chairman of the Orange County Criminal Justice Coordinating Committee, and so we met every month, the health care agency, the sheriff's department, the district attorney, public defender, the presiding judge of the court, the presiding judge of the juvenile court. Uh, we had the uh, probation chief and we worked and said, how can we get Laura's Law implemented in Orange County? And the more we worked on it, the more we agreed that we should, the more we also realized we had no money. We were going through a, a, an economic recession and could not locate the necessary funds to implement the program. So I met with then President Pro Tem Daryl Steinberg and said, we need to be able to use a little bit of Prop 63, and if you can allow for that, then we can fund Laura's Law. And so Senator Steinberg put together Senate Bill 585, and it was uh, approved by the legislature and signed by the governor. And I bumped into Daryl one day flying to Sacramento, or, and, and he was on the plane, and, and he, it turns out he has a brother, a rabbi in Irvine, California, and, and he looked at me and says, if I get 585 approved, will you adopt Laura's Law? And I said, yes, we will. And sure enough, super, uh, Supervisor, Senator Wynn and I and Senator Bates, two other colleagues, unanimously voted for Laura's Law. We became the second county in the state to adopt Laura's Law, 12 years after Helen Thompson's uh, bill was approved. And so uh, it was quickly followed by counties like Yolo, Placer, San Francisco, Contra Costa, Mendocino, Los Angeles, San Diego, and just last month, Ventura County. So I think Senate Bill 1273 will have a chance to provide another tool for counties in their toolbox to be able to approach the mental health crisis that we are facing. Our emergency rooms are overburdened, 
And when individuals come in for a health crisis, a mental health crisis, they don't stay for an hour or two. It could be days. And so we need to be able to help them. And when we have emergency rooms that are overburdened, our police departments are having trouble. They, they drive from hospital to hospital to find a, a location to, to help the person that's impacted. And that takes up a lot of public safety time. So we, we and then we do a disservice if we put them in a, in, in a location that's there designed to do uh, triage instead of psychiatric therapy. So we need to remove the ambiguity. If, 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 if a law is, is not clear and it's not specific, what we find is that county council comes to us and says, you can't adopt it because it isn't specific, and then we're kind of stuck. But once we make it specific, like we did with Senate Bill 585, uh, we started an ability to help a lot of people in this state. So I am honored today, colleagues, to have so many health care providers in support of SB 1273. They certainly understand the necessity of having something very clear. I under I'm honored to have the endorsement of the Darryl, of Daryl Steinberg and the Steinberg Institute. I'm honored to have Senator Robert Hertzberg's uh, co-authorship as, as well as many of my Republican colleagues as co-authors. And uh, we just want to stop the ambiguity, make it very clear, and <clears throat> this will provide an option that will address a significant need. And I respectfully uh, request your I vote.